Today we're going to look at the specific topic of recliners. We're going to look at how to choose a recliner and we're going to look at how to use a recliner both for say watching a movie on your laptop and for reading a book. I'm going to take two examples, a cheap recliner and an expensive recliner. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, ergonomist, posture therapist, author of the posture manual and creator of three online posture programs. Whatever be the seat that you choose, you will always have to assess it according to the same criteria, which I'll call rule number one and rule number two in my book, The Posture Manual. Rule number one is really uh, intrinsically linked to the seat, whilst rule number two is more about what you do when you use the seat. Okay, so rule number one states that from here to here, when you sit, your spine should neither be rounded nor hollow nor twisted. And that has serious implications in terms of holding slash stabilizing the pelvis, i.e. the first function of a seat, whether a recliner or an other chair, is to provide you with a proper lumbar support, which should better be called a proper pelvic support. So test number one is sit in your recliner and feel if your pelvis is well supported in the different positions that the recliner can take. On this one, this is the reason why I added this extra option, which is the lumbar support adjustment, both in depth and in height. Now you heard me say that when you choose an office chair, you should have your feet firmly on the floor to be able to push yourself deep against the backrest. This is true on a recliner too, but you see that this one uh, doesn't do the job whilst it's the lowest one in the collection. Yeah, I've made it extra low. Still, it doesn't work. So what does this imply? It implies that if I want to be, say, reading, for example, well, I mean, in an upright position, I will have to have a foot rest. But actually, it's not that dramatic when you recline, because when you recline anywhere, your feet are off the ground, and as they are supported, here at calf level, you see that I have no problem with being against the lumbar support and not sliding forward. So, you know, the height of the chair is super relevant if the chair is upright. If you recline, it will matter less. Now, next parameter, which is super important, is the height of the backrest. Because you see, if you open the backrest like this, well, somehow you'll need your head to be supported, otherwise you go like this. And as you don't want to go like this, you go forward with your head, and holding your head forward is really a bad thing. So the, the recliner's backrest really needs to go high, and preferably it should be tiltable so that in some way you manage to, um, to, to hold uh, the, the rear part of your skull. You see that your line of sight is up there, this is what we're going to use soon. On this one, I did feel that especially when I was taking a nap, it was more comfortable with an extra pillow. So after buying it, I asked the manufacturer to um, create a pillow for me, uh, which well, makes it much easier to relax the neck when I'm having a nap. Now, let's be honest, this kind of recliner is stupidly expensive and there are cheaper options which are also quite good. And for once, I'm going to cite an IKEA furniture. Come with me. You see, here is the famous Poong chair from IKEA. And actually, if you sit on it, well, the lumbar support is not adjustable, but somehow it feels like it's at the right place. And my feet can be on the ground. But you see, I'm really forced, if I don't use any cushion, to be reclining like that. The cool thing about this um, piece of furniture is that you have an extra footrest here, which isn't so expensive, it's around $50 here in Europe. And when you're like this, you can be taking a nap, you see? Your, your pelvis is well supported, your neck is supported as well. So this one, whilst it's not adjustable, is perfectly comfortable as well, at least for most people. Now, as you see, I cannot adjust the tilt angle, so when I read or I do something, I will have to reorient my line of sight, and this is what we're going to discuss now. 
Once your spine is stabilized, you need to think about what you're going to do with your neck, your neck being the combination of your eyes or the result of what you do with your eyes and what you do with your hands. We're going to start with eyes-only activities, that is reading a book or potentially uh, watching a movie. Let's say I'm reading a book, super interesting book. You see, I'm supporting my pelvis, I'm supporting my neck, I'm doing nothing with my arms and shoulders, and here is the book, here are my eyes. So I have a problem, okay? How could I resolve this problem? Either by doing this, which results in massive um, neck and shoulder strain, or by doing that, which is called forward head posture, or by doing this, which is super tiring, okay? So no good alternative among these three. And this is why I will need cushions. So let's first take this cushion. You see that if you put this cushion behind your neck, well, cool, but your line of sight, sight is still here, okay? So that's not yet the direction of the book. So the cushion needs to be lower. It needs to be around mid-back so that it really reorients your spine. And here, my line of sight has gone down. Now I'm looking really in that direction, which is much closer to a book. And I'm going to take a second cushion to now raise the book, so we do kind of, you know, the, 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 the book does half of the way, I do half of the way. And now here, I'm comfortable to read. The position where my cushion is behind my head is not a bad position, I'm not saying that, you know, it's that versus that. What's the difference? This is, say, more in direction of my family members, for example, with whom I'm having a drink, but not yet in direction of the book. So this is the position to have a drink when I'm a bit tired or have a tea or daydream or listen to music. And this is the position to read a book with a book on a cushion which is on my laps. And it's the very same idea if I want to use my laptop. You know, if I want to use my laptop, well, here is the position. I put the screen uh, in direction of my line of sight, okay? And uh, there, I should be watching a movie. I'm not too happy with your hands being on the keyboard, so really like working, because, you know, the thing is, um, you will tend to, one, spread your elbows, which creates strain in your neck and shoulders. Two, as you're focused much more on your work, then on a movie that you just watch, your head will tend to do that when you work due to the, to the mental focus. So a recliner is more a position for doing nothing with your hands on the laptop than for actively working on the laptop. Due to the ventilation issues, it's not great to do what I'm doing here uh, with a simple cushion, but you also have different types of cushions where you have a wooden plate and underneath you have the cushion so that the ventilation of the laptop uh, isn't impaired. On the recliner is going to be kind of exactly the same, except that I will be able to adjust the, the leg support independently from the backrest support. So you see, if I want to listen to music, I'll be here with my line of sight here, but instead of using a cushion, I will say, okay, look, I'm going to use the backrest to come forward and therefore I only need uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the cushion for the book. And furthermore, I can replace the head cushion with the adjustment of the headrest. And you see, I don't need any extra cushion to be comfortable and just read my book. Same with the laptop. I hope this made sense. So bear in mind, you want proper lumbar support, you want proper head support, and depending on whether the uh, recliner is very adjustable or less adjustable, you will need cushions or the mechanism to orient your spine, or more precisely, to orient your line of sight. And once you are in a proper position, the tools should come to you. This is called ergonomics. The book should come to you or the laptop should come to you. And to do this without any static muscle contraction, you will use cushions, supports and the like. If you find it useful, well, share it around you, comment, like, and let me know if you have other uh, videos that you want me to shoot.